Okay guys, potatoes are a thing of beauty. So here is a little collection of my favorite potato recipes. I think you're gonna love it. Lovely people, we are gonna celebrate the creation of the perfect roast potato. It's not just a potato, this is the perfect roast potato. And if you think I'm going mad, it's because I'm mad for roast potatoes. Crispy outside and fluffy inside. We're gonna do it three ways. Goose fat potatoes, butter, clementine, rosemary, garlic. The Maris Piper is an incredible, incredible potato. Fluffy and starchy. The peeling of the potatoes, you don't need to see that. I've got them parboiling in here in salted boiling water. They're kind of that size. Cook them for about 10 minutes. The best roast potatoes I've ever made have come from a time when I almost felt I'd overcooked them and created mashed potato, okay? So you need to tread that line very, very, very carefully. So I can see they're just kind of thinking about breaking up. Pour it into the colander. This steaming part here now is also incredibly, incredibly important. It's starting to get starchy, see it go kind of fluffy and white, and little kind of flecks and flakes of broken bits of potato. These are the things that are gonna give you crispy bits, and we love crispy bits, and a crispy outside, okay? Really, really important. In tray number one, olive oil. Three tablespoons, lower in saturated fats, so we love that. We're gonna move on, butter and olive oil. Half as much, and then a nice knob of butter. Butter's gonna give you incredible flavor and a sort of lovely sweetness. But also, a strong contender for gorgeousness is goose fat. You can get it in all the supermarkets, three or four tablespoons in there, you're gonna get a richer flavor. It could be pork fat, it could be beef tallow. I love all of them, but I generally sway for the butter and the olive oil. But at Christmas, I kinda go for the goose fat because it's so good. A little secret ingredient that I do, a swig, tablespoon, of red wine vinegar. It will disappear and what's left is a really subtle kind of tang that just helps make the perfect roast potato. Then herbs. So let's go to the olive oil here, getting some lovely rosemary. Put it under a hot tap. If you put it under a hot tap, it just wakes up the natural oils in the rosemary. Okay, so rosemary goes in, and of course, best friends with garlic. Leave the skin on. The skin will protect the garlic, and it will release the garlicness very gently. The whole bulb of garlic. Trust me, guys. Then we're gonna go to the olive oil and butter. Sage is a classic. Beautiful, beautiful fragrant herb. That goes in. And then we've got clementine, just the zest. Lovely. That will make a difference. It's gonna be really, really good. Last but not least, goose fat. Just go brave on bay leaves. Dried ones are okay, fresh, amazing. Four, five, six, and then go in with some thyme. We're gonna hit these up with some salt and pepper, olive oil, rosemary, garlic, clementine, uh, butter, olive oil, and sage and bay, thyme, and goose fat. Delicious. Now back over here. While these little bad boys are steaming hot, right, we need to chuff them up. Scratching and scraping the edge. Chuffing, right? I've made it up, okay? Look what I'm doing, look what I'm doing. Woohoo! See how I've beaten that up, right? So that's good. So we're gonna go in, while they're hot, just mix up all of these. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm gonna cook these in an oven, uh, about 180, 190, which is about 350 Fahrenheit. Over the period of about 50 minutes, maybe an hour, they're gonna get gorgeous and golden and crispy. But after about 40 minutes, I wanna show you the last little tip to make these incredible. Take the tray out of the oven after 40 minutes, place the potato masher on top, and then just let it pop. And let the lovely starchy inside just puff out and then create a flatter surface area on the bottom and the top. Just do that around the whole tray and then pop it back in for another 10 minutes. You can hear the sizzle. Have a little shake up. You can see and you can hear there is crispy perfection in the house. Goose fat potatoes, the butter potatoes with the clementine. The smell in this room is off the chart. And last but not least, the rosemary, garlic, and extra virgin olive oil. Crispy, fluffy, perfect, tangy, little, gorgeous. Oh, roast potatoes. Everything in the world goes with roast potatoes. I know you feel the same way as I do. Ah, oh, crispy and fluffy. Yeah, baby. Just give me a little bit of peace. Can I just have a little moment on my own? Go on, off you go. Hi guys, okay, so we're gonna make 
the most incredible potato salad. Potato salad is the best, but many of us get them from the supermarkets. I don't think they're very good. So real deal potato salad. The flavors are phenomenal and the textures as well. And I'm gonna show you them three ways, almost like an evolution of this very, very simple, simple salad. Here we have got new potatoes boiling. Always put the new potatoes into boiling water as opposed to cold and bringing them up. This preserves the flavor and the nutrients. So these have been cooking for about 15 minutes. You can sort of tell when they're cooked, when you can get them out and you can just squash them. Lovely. Let's drain these, cut them up into little quarters. If some completely break up, and sort of smash into almost like potato snow, that's fine because it'll make um, your dressing more interesting. So don't be worried about that. Gorgeous extra virgin cold pressed olive oil. Season with some salt and pepper. And we're gonna go in with some lemon. Uh, we don't have to uh, waste the skin. If you've got one of these little fine graters, give it a few little swoops of the lemon skin. No bitterness there at all, just pure flavor and then the juice going in. Often when you flavor things when they're cold, it just sits on the outside. Because it's hot, you know, whatever you put in now will go in to the actual veggie. So this is beautiful. So with our bowl, we'll give it a nice little toss. And that is your basic salad. Then we're gonna add our flavors. So some chives, parsley, a little bit of mint. We'll roll it up almost like a kind of herby cigar. We'll just finely slice it the best we can. Chives have got that very delicate onion smell. It's very gentle. This is rock chopping. Um, you can easily do a great job by cross chopping. And that's the simplest, safest way. Just grab your hand flat like that and just go through it into the potatoes right there. We'll have a little taste. Mmm, really happy with that as it is gorgeous, but we can take it on a little bit, okay? So if you wanted it to be a little creamy, you could just slap a load of mayonnaise in there, but to be honest, mayonnaise is nice, but I prefer really good quality yogurt, and it will give you that creaminess. So two or three tablespoons of yogurt, and just toss that up. That's perfectly lovely, but I think we could add some flavor to that as well. English mustard for me, a teaspoon is the way to do it. It just gives it a really nice hum. So I'm really happy with that, but there's more we can do. Get two or three rashes of bacon, smoked, it has to be smoked, and just finely slice the bacon. And in a matter of minutes, you can get them super crispy. So the fat will render out of the bacon, crispy and golden. Get the bacon out and let this cool down. That's gonna give an amazing crunch. And then that fat is just absolutely gagging to have breadcrumbs cooked in it. So crispy bacon bits, crispy breadcrumbs, another level. This is a really, really delicious thing to do. So there are our crispy bacon bits. We'll just sprinkle those over the potato salad. Smokiness, little crunch, little savory breadcrumbs. Over the top it should sizzle and you've got all the lovely flavour from that bacon in to breadcrumb. Delicious. Good flavour, clean, crunchy, soft, so really, really nice. Love this on picnics, barbecues, serving it with roasted meats. So there you go, potato salad three ways. So I'm gonna give you one of my very favorite potato side dishes. You are gonna love it. This is an alforno, a bake of sliced potatoes, fennel, onions, parmesan, cream. It's gonna be so delicious and moorish. Brilliant with meat, fish, even as a veggie dish, minus the anchovies. But basically, this is the king of potato dishes. I just love it. So, first up, get yourself a kilo of Maris Piper potatoes. And you wanna peel those, and then slice thinly as you can, and then I want two white onions. Just peel it and finely slice it. Two fennel goes in and remove the herbs and we're gonna save this for later. Put the herbs in cold water so they don't dry up. So the stalky part here, just finely slice and then when you get the bowl, cut it carefully in half and we'll finely slice this. So we've got all of our sliced veg there. So just mix it up, pack it down 
as much as you can. It looks like a lot, but it's gonna cook down. Trust me, it's gonna be amazing. Now, what we gotta do now is earn flavor. So a pot goes on. I've got 600 mils of whole milk and then 400 mils of double cream. This is supposed to be indulgent. So as that comes up to temperature, I will lightly season this and then we're gonna go in to some other clever fragrances. First up, just a bit of rosemary and bay. And all I've done is tie it up like that. So think of it like an infusion. You just plop this in here and the flavor that you're gonna get from the bay and the, the rosemary is gonna be savory and meaty and delicious. And then a quarter of a nutmeg. Oh, it smells amazing. And then I want eight cloves of garlic. And we're gonna crush this garlic, if you've got a nice little crusher. Who makes this? It's a really good, oh, Jamie Oliver. A subtle plug, that's what you like. So garlic goes in, and then this is a really divisive ingredient, anchovy. You've got the oil, which is beautifully scented, and then five or six fillets. Now, when I put this in the cream, it will just melt, it will disappear, it will give you depth of flavor. As this comes to the boil, you can see a few little bubbles now. Just have a look at this. Oh, hallelujah. It just smells amazing. What I want to do now is just put about 50 grams of Parmesan into this cream off the heat. And these fine graters are fantastic at getting those hard cheeses sort of really nicely grated and um, another wonderful product available in the Jamie Oliver shop. At this stage in the game, this herb has done its job. And if you taste that, oh, oh yes! Come on, this is what cooking's all about, right? You take your standard frumpy old potato and then you create a taste sensation to die for. So we'll finish this with just a little kiss of Parmesan. I wanna cover it in some tin foil and we're gonna cook it for half an hour at 180 degrees Celsius. So it's gonna help the potatoes cook and absorb all that beautiful flavor and it will shrink down a bit. Then I'll rip it off and we'll do 40 minutes or until golden blippy and so outrageously beautiful, you're nearly gonna rip the door off the oven to get it on the dinner table. Right, wrap it up. Now, the good news is if you had a dinner party or a busy occasion and you wanted to do this the day before, absolutely fine. And you can just bang it in the oven tomorrow. But I am gonna cook this right now and you're gonna love it. So the potato and fennel al forno has had an extra 40 minutes after I've taken the tin foil off and it's now golden blipping and delicious. I've had a little peek. It's all very exciting. So at this stage in the game, we can kind of retrieve these beautiful fennel fronds from the water. It looks amazing and it tastes really perfumed and fragrant. So out they come. Right, it's time to have a look at our potato and fennel our fauna. Look in there, man. Oh, yes. Come on. Golden, delicious, blipping away. The smell is phenomenal. So that all I would do is serve it at the table, finished with these beautiful fennel frongs, and that is just gorgeous. This is one of those techniques, one of those recipes that always makes a meal. And as you go through the seasons, you can swap out fennel for asparagus or celeriac or celery or mushrooms. You can just have fun with it, but ultimately it's just a beautiful thing. I am gonna serve a little bit up, really get in there. Come on, man. Oh, the smell. You get some of those juices. On its lonesome, but frankly, I don't care, because it's so blooming good. Mm. Joy. Big, bold, delicious, and totally scrumptious. You've got to have a go at this. You're going to love it. Mm. I love it.